my moon face was completely gone within two weeks of taking magnesium and taking magnesium during a certain time of day is the secret that I found that will help you with inflammation and insulin resistance. Before we get into that, there are different types of magnesium you can take that are suitable for you. You just have to figure out which works for you. And there's different types of milligrams. So keep in mind that these are milligrams absorbed. So for example, if you're taking magnesium oxide, 400 milligrams, the back of the bottle or something small at the bottom will most likely say 241 of it is absorbed. You want to pay attention to the absorption rate. Also notice that for children, adults, teenagers, women, men, breastfeeding women, pregnant women, they all have different milligrams. So it really truly depends on your specific needs. It also depends on where you live. If you live in the US or Canada, depending on where you live in the hemisphere on the globe depends on the amount you take as well. I've shared on this post that I take magnesium and it doesn't matter which one you take, it truly doesn't because I take the lowest form of magnesium and online sources say the highest form is best for you. However, the lowest form works for me. The difference between the lowest form and the highest form is that it just works better on your tummy through your digestion, meaning you're not gonna have problems with IBS, but I already suffer from that anyways. So making sure that I have 25 to 30 grams of fiber every day helps me with that. Can you believe people in the comments were saying that I was gatekeeping information? I was very clear, any type of magnesium works. It just depends on what works for you and how it works for you. You won't see those comments because TikTok filtered them out, but I will tell you that the best time of day to take magnesium is what works best for you. Now, how do you know what works best for you regarding the time of day to take magnesium? Do you have morning cravings or do you have nighttime cravings? I started taking magnesium after dinner with six ounces of water and food as recommended so it doesn't upset your stomach. And that has significantly helped with my nighttime cravings, helping me be calm before sleep, or at least allowing my body to feel calm because of other conditions that I have like thyroid issues, I still have trouble falling asleep. However, I've noticed my body has become significantly more relaxed before bed. My husband, on the other hand, he gets morning cravings. So at first he felt really chill, just like we both did. We, we both felt super, super chill. Like nothing could bother us for like the first two weeks of magne two or three weeks of magnesium, but he wasn't really seeing a significant reduction in cravings. And he was like, man, why does it work for you? Is it because you have insulin resistance and PCOS and I don't? And then I said, well, let's think about it. The magnesium works for me because it makes me feel like I don't need to have any snacks anymore throughout the day. I used to have snacks all the time throughout the day. And like, I literally would plan, like, you guys remember Kevin from the office when he would like first lunch, second lunch, early dinner, that sort of thing. That was me with my snacks. Okay. I don't have any snacks anymore because I don't crave them. My husband doesn't have that issue at night or really during the day, but he does have that issue in the morning. So about a week or two ago, I recommended to him to take his magnesium in the morning with his breakfast. And he says he has significantly reduced his appetite for the first two hours while he's at work doing his very hard manual job. So I believe that it depends on when you are the most likely to have those cravings. You should take it beforehand. That is my personal experience with that. Of course, you should talk to a doctor before starting any regimen because there are some people who can't take magnesium. I think people who have kidney problems can't take magnesium. There are certain medications that you can't combine supplements with. So obviously you're going to want to consult a medical doctor or a registered dietitian before you start any routine. But these are just the things that help for me. And I like to share them because it helps keeps me motivated. And if it inspires people in the process, that's just the frosting on the cake. If magnesium glycinate is the best for you and you don't mind taking large pills or taking four a day, then that's fine. For me, I can't do that. I would rather make sure I have more fiber so I don't have the side effects of the tummy issues and taking magnesium oxide because the pill is one and it is very small and easy to take as in swallow. Let's say you try taking magnesium oxide and that doesn't work for you and you need to try to upgrade to the higher form of it, magnesium glycinate. Maybe that will work better for you. All of this is just a trial and error. You can try going gluten-free or dairy-free for 30 days and see if it works for you, but you have to make sure you truly stick to it. You have to read all the ingredients and everything that you're doing. 
dairy isn't just cheese. Dairy is in so many things on our processed meals and the tiny little ingredients. Gluten, there's different words for gluten that you need to pay attention to. So really making sure that you are following it to a T is what works. And of course, I'm not 100% gluten and dairy free. Once in a while, I'll have the honey walnut shrimp at Panda Express and there's gluten on that. So I'm not perfect either, but 99% of the time, I make sure that every single thing that I have, at least in my house, is 100% gluten-free and dairy-free. That's a given. When I go out, I try to be gluten and dairy-free, but there's always going to be some gluten or dairy in there somewhere, right? So we just have to do what works for us and make sure that we're taking care of our bodies and being very intuitive with what works best for us with hopefully the guidance of a registered dietitian or a medical doctor who's on your side and very knowledgeable. I can have another... 10 minute talk about how I've been gaslit by doctors with the same exact issue who said that this won't work for me while it was already working for me. And that can be for another time. If you want to know that story, let me know.